Good morning, good morning, good morning. This is Leah from Blue Whale Arts, and we are under the arbor talking gourds, of course, right? Um, as long as the weather's good, I will do videos under the arbor if people are interested. Um, and I know I don't put it on a schedule or anything, but this is when I come out to the gourd garden, so it's usually around 7 o'clock every morning. However, I have been getting some wonderful feedback, so thank you, everybody. Um, in regards to, they want to start growing gourds. They want to do gourds again. They didn't have a successful time last year or last time they've tried. Um, and so um, I'm happy to know that my gourd garden is inspiring others to give it a try again because gourds are one of the funnest crops to grow. They can also be one of the challenging crops to grow and they can also be one of the very disappointing crops to grow. But boy, when you get them, it's wonderful experience. One of the first things that people say is, what are you doing? Well, what I do for my area, I live in New Hampshire, may not necessarily be what you're going to do. Now, let me give you a little bit of background about myself because um, a lot of folks don't know. Uh, my grandpa moved from Poland to the United States back in 1919. And when he per came to the United States, he worked in a factory and bought a small farm. And so he was a farmer, and my mom, of course, grew up on the farm, raising cows and crops and all of those good things. I am not a master gardener. My knowledge comes from my mom and my grandpa and their growing experiences, and I'm always learning and looking to improve, and um, I think that's part of growing. Hi, Carolyn. How are you? And so one of the first things I ask people, um, and so I just want to put that out there my experience comes from my family history and growing up with my mom and doing crops and what she's done and some of the old time things like never put the crops in before the last full moon in may that's for our area and so um i think that's important to know what area you're in now so the first per thing i ask folks is when they say what are you doing and i'll say well what zone do you live in we have, and these maps are available on the USDA website. They're called zone maps. And those zone maps help you know what you're in. And so there's two different types that you'll see. You'll see one that just shows the zones that will go one through, um, it's 13 different zones in, in the United States and Alaska and Hawaii. And then um, there's another map that breaks it down even further where there's a zone like, for example, I'm in zone 5, but I'm really in zone 5B. And so, um, but I'm in zone 5. So knowing what zone you're in really is important information because that's going to tell you when it is safe to put your crops in the ground and when it is safe. So, for example, for gourds, um, I had some people tell me, you will never be able to grow big gourds in New Hampshire. You don't have a long enough growing season. However, I've also figured out that I start for New Hampshire, for my zone, I start my gourd seeds in a cold frame. And this is the hard shell seeds, not the ornamental seeds. I start them around April 1st in a cold frame or a greenhouse. Anything before April 1st, I found that they became too wild and unruly and did not do well. It stunted them when they went into the ground. Um, anything too late after April 1st, I found that it wasn't really enough. But April 1st was around my target date. Now, this year I tried something different and I used a heat mat. Uh, to start my seeds and I started them without the soil so that I could make sure that they were going to germinate and I have learned that April 1st is actually too early for the heat mat. I need to start them around April 15th if I'm going to use the heat mat to germinate my seeds um, because again they became too um, wild in the cold frame and so some of them struggled a little bit but I actually I've done pretty good I think um, so that's some timelines for zone 5 and what I do here for New Hampshire and um, so knowing what zone you're in is really really important for um, starting and when to put them in the ground now I start them in the cold frame 
either around April 1st. This is hard shell gourds. Um, but I do not put them, um, the ornamental gourds, I start in the cold frame around May 1st. Anything for them before that is really um, too long of a season because hard shell gourds need a good 120 day growing season. And that April 1st target date gives us that. The ornamental gourds need a 90 day growing season. So putting them in a month later around May 1st gives them that opportunity to become good full gourds. Um, so I hope that's helpful. If you have any other questions for me, shoot them out in the comment section. Um, and that way there you'll be able to, um, you know, I'd be able to answer them in these videos. Like I said, I am not a master gardener. My knowledge comes from my mom and my grandpa. Um, I have some wonderful gourding friends that when I get stuck, I pick their brains a little bit. I have been growing gourds since 1999 at some level. Um, actually, before that, because I cut my first gourd in 1999, I had grown three gourds for fun just before I got into full gourding. Um, but during this whole time, even while we were on the road, I have photos of us try me growing gourds and Barry being very patient with me as we lugged them in and out of the trailer every morning and every night. Um, so that we can get them um, growing. I did not grow the large varieties because I knew by the time I got back off the road they would not be successful. So I stuck with more of the um, ornamental gourds just so that I could continue to grow gourds. Since we've been home for two years um, and not on the road, um, I was a little bit on the road last year myself and my sister-in-law, but um, being off the road allows me the opportunity to really put a lot of energy into growing the larger gourds so um, if you have any gourding crest questions i can try to do my best i'm just going off of what my gut tells me to do for my gourds and i really think i've been pretty successful with it so again go to the usda know where your zone is and what zone you're in and that's helpful the other thing too is a great resource is the cooperative extensions Every state, I believe, has a cooperative extension, and they can help you tremendously. I had someone from ask me, when do I grow gourds? Well, I don't live in Nevada. However, I have a cousin that moved from New Hampshire to Nevada, and she said that the growing there is just so much different than here in New Hampshire that they can almost get two growing seasons for their fruit and vegetables. She doesn't grow gourds. I don't know why because it's a fun crop, but that's all right. I'm still working with her on that. But um, she said that when she moved to Nevada, the cooperative extension was so helpful for them to understand the growing season. So tap into that resource because that's going to help you know when to put your crops in, when to start your crops, but, um, if you need to start them in a greenhouse or a cold frame. Uh, you know, they'd like full sun, obviously they're full sun, and they like warm weather. Um, but don't let anybody say you can't do something in your region. Just try it. Don't be afraid to try it. The worst thing that's going to happen is you're not going to get any gourds. But it's the it, that's disappointing. I know, I know. It's okay. It's disappointing. However, I had uh, somebody say to me, who was a farmer, say, you will never be able to grow big gourds or really any gourds other than the ornamentals in New Hampshire. And that is absolutely not true. Last year, I had gourds that were almost three quarters of an inch thick. So, and they were the large, large canteen gourds. So don't let anybody tell you. And then this year, we know we've got some big babies out there. Um, now, how thick they're going to be, I don't know. But you know what? It's a starting point that I was able to get some really big gourds. So, is there anybody that wants to see anything in the gourd garden today? Why don't we go take a cup, a little peek at some of them? I haven't done any morning walks. Hope this information is helpful for you to start. Um, don't forget, we do have seeds, pure seeds, available on the Blue Whale Arts website. And we have large gourds and we have... Um, ornamental gourds and hard shell gourds and next year's crop we're going to even have more and next year this 2021 seeds we will have more varieties available because we've been very successful in getting some pure 
um, seeds for some of the varieties I was hoping to have last year. So let me go ahead and see, um, turn this around and let's do a quick tour and take a peek at some of the gourds this morning. Let me see, here we go. Alrighty, so for someone that says you cannot grow large gourds in New Hampshire, and I know it's hard to tell on video how big a gourd is. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to stand next to or put my leg next to it. So this gourd is almost to, oops, that's not it. There it is. This gourd is almost under, just under my knee. So it's almost the whole length of my shin. And I'm 5'3", so I'm not super tall. And that one there um, is probably up to my knee if past my kneecap when I stand next to it. Now it is on a little bit of a board, but it's still bigger than that. Hi, Uncle Ray. How are you doing? Um, and that's cool. My uncle grew up on the farm too. He's watching right now, so that's really cool. And um, let's see. Here's another big one we've got right in here. And so those are really big. Now we also know we have some giant bushels growing and we'll walk over to the other part of the garden because, you know, you can do it in your zone. I encourage people to go ahead and try because the worst case scenario is that, I know you don't get anything, but you will make it at least one. You know, it's the challenge and the fun of them and to watch them grow. Let me see if we can... Um, see that little, that little whitey bump in there? That's a bushel gourd. And that baby is huge. And then we have another one. Let me see if I can zoom in on it. See right there? That's another one. And I'm telling you, some of those are some big, big gourds. Hi, Jackie. Hi, Eleanor. Alrighty. So now, let me see. This one here is a... African wine kettle. Now that baby is going to, that's a big one. And I actually bought one about that size. Well, actually, Barry bought it for my 20th anniversary. I know, we're so romantic. And then I have in here another large canteen gourd. And that gourd in there is approximately um, 15 to 16 inches, maybe almost 17 inches across. And then we will go over. I can't get over to those other guys until we walk through here. We got a nice little bottle gourd growing there. And let me just zoom back out because this is the jungle that we go through. Um, we might as well peek at, remember those little Chinese bottles and the wind beat up my big giant leaf? And look at them. Look at how big they are. This is my hand. So let me tell you, I was nervous about these, these two ladies. I've got two of them, and I tied them up with nylons in case my platforms got blown down with the, um, in the storm that they wouldn't go crashing down because I tried picking one up, and it's got to be almost 25 pounds right now. At least in my mind's eye it is. Okay, so we're going to go over. And we're going to walk through here. Oh, let's take a peek at the long handle dipper. Oh my goodness, it starts up here. And there's its bottom. So it is now over um, four and a half feet tall. And it's hopefully will over, be almost over five feet tall shortly. All righty. And so we're going to sneak in. So... I've got to take my, shoe, my sandals off so I can feel the vines in here. And we're going to go to this big... Can you see this giant bushel gourd in here? I know it's a jungle out here. But you can grow large gourds in zone 5. That's all I can say. Um, but I hope everyone has a wonderful day. Think about growing, trying some gourds. Um, if there's any questions that you have that I can answer in another video, I will do my best. I will try to um, 
address some of, I know there's a couple other questions, so, but if you have something, let me know. And I hope everyone has a beautiful, wonderful, happy Gordon Day. We'll talk to you tomorrow.